what do you think went wrong in the metal air attack where about 23, according to reports by the army, 23 military men were killed? What do you think went wrong? I'll tell you something. You see, our army is a very highly trained army. Our army is a very mobile army. But sometimes in war, you find, depending on the top echelon of command at certain operation areas, you find some form of laxity. We are in a defended locality, for example. And when you drop your oars, the enemy strikes. Very importantly also, troops need to be educated on counterintelligence operations. Counterintelligence operations should not be left to members of the intelligence community alone. All of the people that come to sell things to them at their camps, all of the people that fraternize with them one way or the other, supposed civilians, could be agents of the Boko Haram group. And the moment information gets to Boko Haram group through these agents, how that the soldiers have relaxed their guard. Because there comes a time, sometimes out of battle fatigue, soldiers may relax their guard. So it behoves command to be able to do what you call switch operations, switching men who have gone through what you call battle stress and bringing fresh men to the front lines in order to ensure that your command at that battalion level platoon level or section level is always fresh and ready for the fight. But when, like I said, intelligence, counterintelligence training should be given to our troops to so know that when there is an operation in an operational area against enemies, anybody, no matter how clad they are, whether in military garb or in civilian garb, even more often in civilian garb, could just be agents of the enemy to gather intelligence as to the disposition of the troops in the battlefield. So I think there was a loss of counterintelligence information. Well, let's, let's dwell a little on this intelligence gathering because modern warfare is based largely on intelligence gathering. Does it appear as though we're getting it right in that regard? Or better still, what can we do to improve on our intelligence gathering? Yeah, intelligence now gathering has gone beyond, you know, normal human intelligence gathering to using technology uh, to gather intelligence, drones and the rest of them. I think that uh, our armed forces need to connect better with the communities, you know, around the operational area. Because no matter how much intelligence technology gives you, there's also that part of the human intelligence, you understand. So, and communities around the operational areas, they are privy to most of the operations of the enemy. Because, you see, the enemy fuses with them. The Boko Haram people, they fuse with them. They, they you know, they, they, are, they work among them. Even recruitment into the cells are from such uh, members of such communities. So there's a need, you know, for also begin to you know revisit revisit our intelligence gathering module you know apart from the technological aspect there's this human factor which is very important let's begin to revisit our human intelligence gathering module you know and then i think we'll be we we'll begin to get it right well, well let, let's go into elections now um you've also always talked about um mind renewal among nigerians in most of your interviews when you talk about mind renewal especially going as concerns the 2019 elections, what exactly do you mean? By that, I mean a moral revolution. A moral revolution, a rethink of where we are, where we are coming from, and where we intend to go, and how we intend to get there. A moral revolution where the Nigerian begins to be competitive, again, in the international arena, where, as a Nigerian, you stand shoulder to shoulder with your compatriot anywhere in the world. Today in Nigeria, you see somebody taking one way in traffic and you accost the fella 
and he thinks he has the right. And he begins to abuse you. And other people join him to begin to abuse you. You go against the law and it's now the new normal. No, it cannot be. We need to reorder our society back to morality, righteousness, justice. How do we, how do, we do that? Yes, we're going to do that by the justice system. We're going to ensure that the justice system works. It will not be a case of who knows the judge any longer, but who knows the law. The law, the rule of law is going to, up, to be upheld. Once the rule of law is upheld in this nation, everybody falls in line. The justice system is the fulcrum of society, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to the institutions of democracy. And when it works, it serves as a self-correcting mechanism. And no matter whose ox is God, it doesn't care, so long as the rule of law is obeyed. And you ensure that, you ensure that. And that's the place of law enforcement. Law enforcement and the judicial system, when they work, our society will come back on moral grounds again. Now let's, let's come back to elections proper now. Compared to 2015, do you think the electorate are better enlightened? <laughs> um, well, I think, generally speaking, the electorate are, are better enlightened. Uh, there's uh, a higher thrust of voter education from the different political parties that are on ground. And there are quite a number of political parties, first time in the history of Nigeria, that you have in this number of political parties. And indeed, almost all of them presenting presidential candidates. So the electorate are better, uh, they're better enlightened. So you will discover that the number of persons, especially youths, that have you know, gone to get their voters' cards in order to effect a change, in the way they are governed, is quite you know, appreciable. Well, what kind of conversations do you expect to shape the outcome of the 2019 elections? Well, it's all about issues. What kind of issues in this you, case? You will discover that um, the contending political parties are not much slinging here because the issues are very glaring for all to see. In fact, the people have written their verdict already. And the issues I talk about are basic issues like hunger. Hunger in the land, which has to do with the economy. Basic issues, unemployment, job creation. Basic issues, access to health care delivery. These are the basic issues that have pervaded our land and you know, kept us in a position of what you call in a beggarly position. As a people and as a nation.